Okay, finally we can get to uh, to do some wiring. And what I have here is a wire, uh, diagram of uh, the stepper motors I'm using. And uh, there's two basic configurations you can put it in. Actually there's four, but uh, uh, we're going to use the uh, bipolar parallel because that gives you the best of both worlds. Um, gives you relatively high torque, relatively high speed uh, at the expense of high current. Uh, the other configuration is series and in series gives you uh, higher torque but uh, the trade-off is speed. Now I don't think a mill like this needs a lot of speed but uh, this seems to be the prevalent configuration most guys use and I'm going to stick with it too just to be safe. Uh, so this is a parallel configuration and um, you can see it's color coded and so what I've done here is I followed uh, you know the wiring diagram there and I paired off uh, with my electric drill I paired off the wires that uh, needed to be paired off together and there's f essentially four wires now what it breaks down to because these will be connected together so will these and uh, this will comprise two coils an A and a B on a stepper motor you can see I still have the stepper motor off because I'm not gonna uh, put it back on until I get these two uh, y-axis limits which is wired up that's why I uh, said before learn by my mistakes uh, I see a lot of guys at, like an afterthought do the limit switches after they've done the whole mod and they've got all their stepper motors wired in and everything else. Uh, that didn't make any sense to me, so makes more sense to put the limit switches on while you're installing uh, the fusion kit. Uh, I think it would make it a lot easier. Uh, since you have it apart, you know, things, stuff like some of this stuff could be drilled on a drill press, uh, like the uh, uh, the Y cross slide here. The two limit switches I got on here, they could have been this block. I had it off; it was removed as a result of the modification. I could have easily drilled four holes in there for the limit switches. Same thing with the um, work surface. Uh, the X slide here, what I, I call the X slide, same thing. I could have just drilled the holes um, on a drill press instead of using this damn thing because, uh, you know, how you wobble with a hand drill, you know, you're wobbling around, a hole ends up bigger than you want it and that kind of thing. So, anyway, here's a little mystery. Just as an aside, by the way, I had this thing off at one time. Now I can't get it off anymore. There was a gib in it, and it, and it used a, uh, you know, a, a lock, one of those locks to lock it in. This is the, and it, at one time, I had it off, and I put it back on, and now I can't get it back off again. It's like, uh, you know, one of those Chinese puzzles. It just doesn't want to come out of here again. Play with it later. All right, so anyway, that's where I am now. And, uh... Let me see, there was one other thing. Let me drop it on the floor. Oh, here it is, right here. This is the stuff I'm going to use. Uh, it's it's a, a braided, uh, I don't know what it's made of, nylon of some sort probably, some, some sort of um, plastic material. And it expands, as you can see, uh, to the thickness of the uh, the wire bundle and so what I'll be doing is this will be the first one here uh, this will go through and we'll attach it to the side here and it will also have the uh, limit switch wiring in it and, and it'll eventually make its way on up into the box here uh, you can see I did all the stepper motors here by the way I'm all paired off and ready to wire up and uh, I want to get started on that. And I think the next time you see this, uh, probably we'll have 
most of it wired up. The box here I'm just leaving in place uh, until I get an idea where I have to poke a couple of holes. I'm just going to use some grommets uh, to bring the uh, cable through the side and any extraneous wiring like this single switch here is the only one on the z-axis bring the wiring down and then through some way here through grommet um, so that's where I am wish me luck with getting this thing off <laughs> I don't have a clue how I got it off it came off so easily too the last time it just kind of fell off and I said oh it came off and I put it back on and I haven't been able to get it off since it's unbelievable all right anyway Ah, lest I forget, um, the wire I'm using is, I, I have this, this old zip cord, it's 18 gauge, and you can see it's colored red and black. I'm going to use uh, red and black for, for one of the coils, and then I have, um, I don't have it out here right now, but I have speaker wire for the other two, same thing, 18 gauge. So I'll have two different colors for each coil so I don't get them mixed up. Uh, and uh, that's the way I'm going to do it. By the way, these things draw a lot of current, so you better use about 18 gauge. Don't use anything smaller than 18 gauge. Okay, I just started wiring this thing up, and uh, let's see, I got a wire in here. I've already got. Uh, what's going to be the uh, interface to the stepper motor. Just wanted to show this for those of you that are electrically challenged. Um, these uh, limit switches are wired in series, what they call series connections. And so I've got the two commons tied together, okay, and the two normally closed uh, one will go to DC return ground here, be 5 volt return inside the uh, box when we get it wired up, and the other one will become the signal. And since they're normally closed and they're wired in series, uh, this Y signal here will be at ground unless uh, uh, one of those cams hits the switch. And opens the switch up so the active signal is uh, open or actually it's a high because it's pulled high in uh, on the card itself but uh, again for you you know those of you that are electrically challenged I, I don't want to get into that uh, here's a schematic for those that uh, understand schematics uh, the two switches are wired in series and by the way, if there was just one switch, it would just be uh, like the Z-axis. The Z-axis signal would be here, it goes through the switch, and just goes straight to ground, the DC return. So that when the cam hits the switch, the switch opens, and the signal goes high. Logic high. All right, so now we got that out of the way. I've already got a, a wire on here, and I've... Is about ready to uh, wire it up. Uh, I don't think you want to be watching me solder all these wires in, but uh, what I'm going to try to do is get. Uh, well, you know, you know, I already said I got these two wires going between the two switches, and so I got to get two wires: one here, and one on the other side. One is going to be DC return. And the other one's going to be the actual signal, and I'm going to get through this uh, uh, sleeving so that I can get it into the box. Um, by the way, it's not, it's not necessary for the other set of switches here. There's two switches here. The DC return signal, or the ground signal, can be picked off one of these switches here. Probably going to pick it off of... Um, this one and just wire it to the two switches on the front here. There's no point in running another wire through the uh, sheathing just for that. 
So we're going to have an X and a Y signal going back into the box here and just one ground that will be uh, used for both set sets of switches. And I'm, I'm going to break this off right now and I'm going to do some wiring and I'll get back to you when I get this, some of this wiring done. Okay, uh, before I continue with the limit switches, uh, I need to get this wired up. This cable here. And uh, let me see if I can get into the shot here. Yeah, there's the motor. I just wanted to bring this up. You can see how I cut these leads on the motor. They're staggered. See, they progressively get longer here. How they're staggered, and that prevents prevents having a, a big bulge. You know, you'll have a big bulge in the cable if you cut them all off to the same length and then add sleeving and, and everything else. You'll end up with a big lump or bump inside the uh, uh, sheathing here. Um, so that's the way I do it. And uh, the way I'm going to tell one coil from the other, I think I told you before, I got a red and a black for one pair. And then I got the speaker wire for the other pair, and the speaker wire has a white on the zip cord here. It's got a white stripe on it, and then it's got a you know, plain copper um, side of it. And that's how I'll tell the other side, and that'll tell me uh, the polarity of the coil also. Um, so let me get, let me get this uh, stripped back and soldered up. Get some heat shrink on it, and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, I got that wired up right here. And by the way, if you don't have one of these, go to Harbor Freight and get one. I think it's called Third Hand or something like that, but been around for years and years. Radio Shack, when they were still in business, used to sell them, but uh, of course we know Radio Shack is no more. So what I'm going to do is to uh, terminate this. I'm going to slide it up as far as I can get it, like this. I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink over the top of this. Hopefully I got a piece that's big enough. Should be big enough. Let's see. No, I got some other got some other uh, heat shrink somewhere. I gotta go fish this thing on here now. I should have put this on first, but I just wasn't thinking and uh, I got ahead of myself. So now I gotta fish it on. On the rear end here, sometimes not easy. Because you got fibers here. You gotta get in the hole there. There you go. We got it. You can see how this stuff is snake like. Pull it back a little bit. I want to get these loose ends tied up there. And uh, I need my heat gun. I'll be back. Okay, I got it all wired up. And, uh, you know, this is an exposed wire. I could have put it down into the uh, braiding, but, eh, you yeah. know, it is what it is. This is what I like about this stuff. You see this wire here? You can just take this stuff and push it back. Let's see if I can get in the camera's view here push it back, shove a wire into the holes there, and snake it through. That's what's nice about it. So this wire and this wire here, and this is the same kind of stuff, just smaller, but this is also pushed through uh, the same braiding. And um, that's for the front. If you can see that, that's for the front, and of course, you know this. This goes back and forth. These are the only two switches that actually move. Uh, all the other ones are on fixed um, 
hardware fixed planes. They don't move. The switches don't move. The cams do. These cams move. These two switches through this wiring. This is, you know, this will never wear out. And by the way, this is, uh, let's see, uh, I want to make sure that everything's in view. This is a screw. Actually, uh, now it's a cap screw, but it was a screw for the accordion, what I call the accordion, which is this, okay? You can see the holes there missing. That's that, um, let's see, how does it go? It goes, yeah, it goes this way in here. So this will actually be under, under here, and then this wraps around this way. And uh, one other little word of caution. So another guy in another video had problems with this. He was talking about tapping the block here. These screws don't line up. Who knows why? But, uh, well, now they do because I drilled a hole here, but uh, the original holes don't line up with the holes they have tapped. Uh, Fusion has tapped into this, so when you go to reattach this, it's not going to fit. Uh, so you're going to have to drill this uh, metal bar out to make it fit. And see, I did. I moved the hole over. Um, I don't know, I'll just speculate that... Uh, This, whatever they did, they took measurements, maybe off a different machine. You know, uh, this is a generic machine, but there are all minor differences, I think, from, from brand to brand. Like a little machine shop may not be exactly the same as a Harbor Freight and that kind of thing. So minor deviations. And um, I think this is one of those areas where, you know, there was some kind of a, a difference between them. So I'm good now with the limit switches. The only uh, switch I got to get wired up, which is a no brainer, is the uh, Z axis up there. You can see it. Where is it? I hate looking at this little screen on my camera. It's really hard for me to see what's in view and what's not in view. There it is. Okay. There it is. This guy, this guy needs to be wired up. And uh, of course, I got to get the uh, motor back on here now, too. And I'm talking about the uh, X axis drive motor. I took, had to take it off to do all of this. And, um, hmm, I'm looking at these clamps. I might have to change these clamps to a larger clamp because I'm probably going to have to get another cable through there uh, for the x-axis. But I'll deal with that. I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm looking around for the motor. I don't even know what a motor is now. What the heck did I do with it? Hmm. All right, well, anyway. You got the gist of this. This is not the end of the wiring, but uh, like I said, it would behoove you to do a lot of this stuff while you're installing the kit so you don't have to remove the x-axis motor and that kind of thing. Get it all done before, you know, you start uh, reassembling. Not a good idea to wire everything up like the stepper motors and everything and then as an afterthought add uh, you know, homing and limit limit switches. It just makes it hard on yourself. Uh, all right, who the heck knows what I did with that motor? <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking all over for it. I don't know what the hell I did with it. All right, over and out. Okay, um, now that I got the z-axis finished and the uh, limit switch wiring done. Uh, I put the uh, X uh, stepper motor back on. Recall I had removed it so that I could get under here and wire up the limit switches for the uh, Y axis. 
and so that's all done now so uh, did the same thing you know I cut the wiring I stepped you know step cut the wiring so that it wouldn't be a big bundle in the uh, sheathing and uh, what I'm gonna have to do first off I'm gonna wire it up uh, and I'll have extra long wire but uh, when I do the final uh, dressing I'll have to bring the X table out all the way because this cable this cable will have to go all the way around I don't know if you can see my hand but it'll have to go from here all the way probably through that clamp and up but um, there's quite a distance it has to move back and forth and so I'll, I'll accommodate that I'll be back after this okay got this one pretty much done here probably uh, I've been thinking you know, I was gonna put drill holes and put grommets I was going to drill holes and put grommets in the box but I've got these holes here to knock out uh, I've, I've just been wondering to probably, uh, you know, just use a Romex clamp in here and uh, run the wiring through that way. And why put myself through uh, more work than I have to do? Uh, I still have to drill a hole on the back of this for a switch, but you can see I extended the table, you know, out to the back. And I got a couple of zip ties here. It would behoove you to not allowed a pivot point to be where the wiring ex uh, exits the uh, motor it's just asking for trouble what you want to do is make it where it's soft and flexible and so I got a couple of zip ties on here to dress the wiring so that the uh, pivot point is right here where this zip tie is and um, you can see this this is how it's gonna Old damn table shaking here. Not even a table, it's an old door. <laughs> it's an old door, and I'm on two plastic saw horses here, so. Shake the whole thing up, but that's pretty much uh, what, what I got there, so. It's almost at the extreme right now. All right, so I've got these two. Like I said, I'll probably just put them through a, a Romex connector if it fits, without interfering with the uh, <coughs> three three drivers that go in the box. And I just got uh, this guy here, uh, the Z-axis motor to do. <clears throat> and I'll probably, uh, I don't know, it'll come down here somewhere. This will be an easy one. The motors that don't move on an axis, the only one that moved on the axis was the X. Um, that's the only one you really got to worry about. The, uh, the Y and the Z are fixed in place. All you need to do is, you know, put some uh, sheathing on it and the convolute if you're going to use this plastic convolute which by the way I hate I hate this stuff that's why I didn't use it I, I, I just simply I, I I never liked this stuff you need you need special fittings and everything else and I don't want to be bothered this stuff um, this stuff we used in aircraft north of Grumman um, I don't know what it's made of, but it's, uh, you know, you, you can't abrade through it, and that's, that's its uh, primary purpose is to prevent abrasion, prevent anything from wearing through, uh, but it's yet, yet it's very flexible, so this stuff is rigid. You know, if you flex this stuff enough, it's going to crack, you know, back and forth on the on the axis here, if you got plastic convolute like that, eventually it's going to break. 
You know, it's just not made uh, that kind of uh, flex. It's not made for you know to be uh, flex flexing back and forth like that repetitively. All right, so uh, I'm going to get the Z done here, and then we'll be ready to uh, finalize whatever I need to do in this box here. Like I said, I know I need an on-off switch. That, that's going in the back. I already have the switch and uh, a red cover that goes over the top of it. And uh, all the holes are drilled for the uh, motor drivers, the power supply. And the five-axis controller is already in there. I didn't take it out. Um, so um, that's about it. I mean, geez, I'm almost done. I'm just realizing now I'm almost done. Uh, so, well, moving along. Okay, time to do the Z. And uh, I've already cut the wires up here on the... Uh, stepper motor but uh, I'm going to remove the stepper motor uh, it'd be ridiculous to to be up here uh, trying to saw the wires and stuff just take the motor off and uh, I, then I can do it down on the bench on the bench here so that's what I'm going to do okay I got the uh, z-axis wiring done and I was able to uh, pick up this switch the the z home switch uh, through the same um, sheathing right here to the end here and so now um, I got these three cables and they'll probably go through one of these knockouts here uh, I don't know if I'm going to use a grommet or if I'm going to use a Romex connector but it really doesn't matter it's just gonna you know they're all gonna go right through the hole there uh, just when I thought I was almost done here uh, I need to get these accordions back on these uh, I don't know what you call them but whatever these guards I need to get them back on and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the box and I'm gonna do as much wiring as I can on my kitchen table uh, and then bring it back in here and and uh, wire in the, you know the rest of this stuff uh, there's a good amount of wiring I can do just sitting down comfortably at a table. Um, so I'll do it that way. Alright, just a quickie. Just a quickie for uh, those of you that may have forgotten how this thing goes back on. But the, uh, the metal bar goes on the top here. The uh, piece that screws into the... Uh, CNC fusion, you know, remember uh, I, I modified this, I had to move a hole over. That piece goes on first, and then this whole accordion, you see I've got a screw in here, it gets flipped over backwards like this. Here's the screw, uh, here's the screw head on this side, gets flipped over this way, and then uh, from the inside, like this, with a screwdriver from the inside, you put the screws back in. Just wanted to uh, mention that. Some guys forget, even even I forgot. So, Okay, we can finally uh, move on. I got the accordions back on. I got everything wired up here. You know, not wired into the box yet, but got everything routed and neatly stowed away and uh, all the motors are back on and I uh, can finally get back to that box. The very first thing I got to do on that gray box back there is I got to drill a hole somewhere in this vicinity here on the drill press for the on off switch and then uh, after that I'm essentially uh, ready to install everything inside the box all the motor drivers, the power supply, everything and then, like I said, I'm going to wire it up most of it on my kitchen table. And uh, I'll bring it back in when I'm ready to wire this stuff up. These, uh, you know, limit switch wiring and the uh, motors, which is no big deal. And that's where it is. It's looking good now. I'm, 
Yeah, it, it looks uh, professional, neat, professional. Everything fits back, so I'm happy with it so far.